exasperated sigh. Hi guys, I'm John Bro, and welcome back to another super stupendous, miraculous, remarkable, exciting episode of Link's Awakening in which we do nothing except for collect secret seashells all day. Hooray, you found a secret seashell. If you collect a lot of these, something good is bound to happen. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Something great is bound for your future if you just call 555-5555 and get 26 secret seashells for $300 each. Might as well, because it feels like they're that expensive with how hard it is to get some of them. Like, some of them are really easy to get, like the one that I just got. You can see there's one secret seashell now in the corner uh, on that little counter. Some of them are really easy, and you'll probably find them on accident, and then there's this one. Things like this, where they're buried next to dead people's bodies in dog houses. Like, that's kind of obscure. And why is this dead body even here in the first place? Madam Meow Meow, you have some serious explaining to do about your pets. Seriously. Like, at least my virtual pet Garfield in all the dungeons, who kind of looks like a manta ray and has a tail stall antenna, he doesn't... You know, he, he hasn't killed anyone. He's tried to kill me a few times with, with this ball of yarn, but that's just a ball of yarn. And I have the balls of steel to do great parenting, or not parenting, whatever. I guess Madam Meow Meow doesn't know about the balls of steel thing. But anyways, you got another secret seashell, yeah! Awkward way to end a conversation. Anyways, now we're just gonna cut to this one because I'm post-commentating and that makes things a lot easier because I would not do this live commentary. I tried, it didn't work. But this one's weird because you have to hit the top, or you can't hit the top of the tree because otherwise you will not get that secret seashell. You have to hit the sides or the bottom. Which, I don't know, I guess that's like a, their way of preventing the secret seashell from jumping off the cliff or something. I really don't know. But anyways, I think that's lazy programming. And speaking of terrible design, if you have exactly five secret seashells, no more, no less, go into the seashell mansion with the big pocky sticks. Just walk in, there's weird distorted seashell JPEGs on the top of the screen, and hey, let's watch this uh, column of milk rise up. And as we were talking about milk, hey, a secret present from Santa. Hooray, I wonder what's inside. Wow! He's finally rewarding us for all our elf work all these years, except this is just a secret seashell. It's a pretty terrible gift. Uh, I would rather have a, I would rather have a lump of coal than a, se a secret seashell, Santa. Please just give me that instead of this. That's kind of, uh, kind of specific of Santa, too. Like, why does he want exactly five secret seashells to give you a secret seashell back? Is that, like, no more, no less? It's like, he probably is the same kind of, uh, same kind of person who will only give you a present if you have exactly ten cookies on your plate left out for him or something. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up as I go, because post-commentary's awkward. But here's a cave that we never really explored, and as you can see by the indicated degree, we can just, uh, blast our way through the wall, and it's still weird to me how certain walls that you can bomb have debris next to them and certain ones don't. This game is just really inconsistent, and this is kind of one of the reasons that I don't really like, uh, playing through the original Legend of Zelda. I'm sure it's a great game, and I sure, I'm sure it would be a great game if I understood it more, but I don't understand it. And I feel like I should figure it out by myself, because that's how it was. Around here, secrets are nigh. Apparently I had to read that twice. I don't know. But it seems like the kind of game that you would have to figure out on your own, because that's what people did when it was around, when it was just an NES game and there was nothing else out. But... It seems too specific. There are too many secret things that are required that you have to burn random specific bushes to get and stuff. Now that we have exactly ten secret seashells, we have to do the same thing that we did with five, and that bar is going to rise up in anger from looking at our big face. Big face, indeed. And we get another gift, which we already know what's inside, of course. Have you ever, have a, have you ever had a Christmas present where you already, already knew what was inside? I have. That was Mario Party 5, I believe. I knew it was Mario Party 5, and that was a Christmas present, I do believe. Um... I don't even know. Like, I, I think I was really wanting Mario Party 5, for some reason, more than anything else that could have possibly come out at that time. And there had to have been something more interesting, but Mario Party 5 is still a good game. Here's another seashell with absolutely no indication whatsoever that you can get it at, at all. Just, uh... 
and also Pokey. You have to move faster when Pokey's around, which I just did just then, because whenever I was recording this all in one go, I kind of forgot that I was recording with an emulator, and I was trying to record certain segments without speed-ups and with speed-ups, and that I just sped through, because I, I, I just... I'm an absent-minded terrible excuse for a human being. Also, I noticed that this is called the Face Shrine, even though the Face Shrine is its own dungeon, which is kind of weird. This I thought this was just called the Southern Shrine, but apparently it's the Southern Face Shrine, because they're two different things, but they're the same thing. It's, it's, it's stupid. Um, okay, this, this, what I'm watching is the editing window for everything that I've done up to this point, so it's kind of laggy for me. I don't know exactly when something's about to come up because there's lots of lots of frame drops involved. But here's a really obvious secret seashell. I like ones that are like this, where you can tell where they are, because they're not even like the heart pieces that you find in walls or whatever, because with those, at least there's an indication by poking the wall with your sword, and then it makes a different sound. You can't poke the ground with your sword. You just have to dig around with a shovel all day and do nothing else. But wouldn't that also be interesting if there was a 3D Zelda game where you could use a shovel? I think that would be kind of cool, actually. Just to hold a shovel all around and then kill enemies with it by hitting people with a shovel, that would be fun. Just go THWAP! I'm Dompe the Gravekeeper, moron! Or something. I... I... <laughs> and now we're back in Telltale Heights. I noticed something, too. Another similarity, uh, similarity between this game and the Mario series. Telltale Heights, Tall Tall Mountain, and Mario 64. Just something to... something to note. And then, I believe... Oh, no, nope, here's a different one. Hey, look at this completely insignificant, inconspicuous little... Oh, that's, uh, it's... Uh, uh, apparently that goes somewhere. This is kind of weird, too. You can get all four or five of these treasure chests by going through the room in a certain way, but you have to come in from the bottom without opening, uh, opening any of the treasure chests beforehand, so you have to do exactly what I just showed just then, which I didn't see because this was being really laggy, but whatever. You get the idea. You'll see it in proper editing form. Uh, so I'm just, like, right here I'm just struggling to figure this out because I haven't done this before. And I'm just bumbling around like a moron, like I always do. It's nothing new. But it's not like any of these uh, are really significant. They're just, you know, rupee chests that say, You got 20 rupees! You're happy! I'm sure you're very happy to be collecting secret seashells all day. And we kill a spider. I actually did kill a couple of spiders in my room recently. One was yesterday, and it was crawling on the wall, and then one was today, uh, on next to my Wii. I was just showing that room again because that shows that the all the treasure chests are opened if you come back into the room and you haven't opened all of them. So it's impossible to go back into the room once you've collected or opened one treasure chest. They all disappear once it's no going back, basically. And here we are back in the Eagle's Tower. I love this place. You don't actually have to hit this big pimple with your fire rod. I just did because I was kind of absent-minded at the time. But yeah, we just, we'll just fall into a hole and go listen to the wonderful music and walk to the treasure chest. And after that, we get another secret seashell. Who would have guessed? <sighs> I hate secret seashells so much. Um, okay. Oh, there, yeah. Remember this one? We're, we're gonna just raid this dead person's decaying house and get their, uh, their secret heirloom that's hidden under a pot. Why would you hide an heirloom like a... How, how could you even hide a seashell under a pot? Whatever. This windfish is just tripping drugs here. He's just whatever. Whatever, I don't know. Those are two things that I say very often, both in real life and while playing video games, but it's just common... and, and no, nothing makes sense in the world. Nothing makes sense at all. 
And here is the absolute worst thing ever. I had to play through the entire game again just to get this. Just to get a boost from the stupid rooster. Yeah, fly across that gap. Uh, because I had to play through the entire game again under a different save file entitled Moron to get that, I'm, I'm not giving Whiskers any bird feed for a year. He is not getting any food, because every other day it's food, food, food with him. I'm, I'm just going to sell him off to someone. He's going to be... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to trade magic beans for him or something. He's not even worth that anymore. But yeah, Dragon Ball Z Bowers, and what is this? Oh, there's a giant flashing ball in the middle of the screen, and it forms into a sword because all swords are welded that way, and we just get splinters flown everywhere. It's like a splinter shower that kind of hurts. You got a new sword! You should put your name on it right away. I'm glad that this isn't on my other save file where I would say moron on the sword instead. Because Luigi deserves to have his name on a big shiny weapon like this, and it works the same way as the weapons in other three or two-dimensional Zelda games, or the other swords, basically, like... You know how in the first Zelda game it was not even a novelty, you just had to have full hearts to shoot beams from your sword and all that? This one, you have to have a special sword by collecting a whole bunch of seashells. You only need 20, though. You only need 20 secret seashells to get the, the new sword. So you don't actually have to get all 26, I just felt like I had to show them all, so that's why I hate them so much. And it's still weird, because I feel like I've collected them all on accident before. Like, 20 on accident, just by playing through the game in a certain way. But, yeah, they're actually really difficult to find, apparently. So, maybe that was just a different save file from one of my brothers or something. I found a good item washed up on the beach, I'll trade it to you for blah 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 in your B button. I just used the shovel here because... Shovel's the least useful item that you have up to this point. And that guy, I think that, that dog-looking creature kind of looks like that cat from the old Mickey Mouse cartoons. Like, uh, Steamboat Willie. Whatever the cat's name is, I don't know. Maybe it's Willie. Mm hmm. I thought that was just the name of the Steamboat, but I could be totally wrong. And here's one more thing that I want to show before the LP's over and I go to the final boss and everything. Here's a raft tour. Or a raft, river raft ride. Want to go on a raft ride for 100 rupees? Yes. Okay, the rest is ready for you. I'm in a really pointy nose. That sounded strange in my... I just brushed my teeth, and I haven't drank any water recently, so I still have, like, bits of toothpaste in my mouth and everything. It just feels weird whenever it's sloshing out of my mouth. But yeah, I'm not going to show the whole raft ride. I'm just going to show as much as I can here, which this is still all post-commentated, so I'm pretending that I'm doing all this at this time, but I'm not... Whatever, there was no way I'm gonna do this, or there was just, yeah, this would not have been possible with live commentary. I did try. Also, this owl diglet says, now you need to look far for, oh wait, now you need to look far for a secret. Which I have no idea what that even means. Like, I really don't. That owl statue is just as useful as the real owl is. They're all pretty pointless. Uh, because if, if it said, now you do not need to look far, that would kind of make sense, because then you'd expect to, you know, shovel up that island and then find something special somewhere, and... I don't know, I did try to dig up that whole little island where that, that owl statue is, though, and I didn't find anything. Maybe I just wasn't looking in the dirt hard enough, but there was nothing there. And it, it says, now you need to look far, so how is that even useful? It, you don't know which direction to look far in. Let's just go to the very edges of this island, this whole gigantic island. Maybe we'll eventually find something. That's the, what the owl statue's saying. Thanks a lot, man. You're so helpful. So, yes, because I felt like I needed a better place to end off the video, we're going to end on this very specific map space, because right above us, we will get to ascend the very same mountain with the Yoshi egg on the title screen. And that's going to be where the end of the game is. It's end game stuff, final boss, all that greatness. So, thank you very what uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this absolutely horrific experience, and I will see you in the finale. This was really awkward to record.